course this is a high level agenda so looks like quite big so we will try our best to uh, cover as much as possible as uh, we have uh, one hour uh, time permits for us so i will just give you the walk through uh, so for the interest of time so you will get a line how the slides and how the demo will uh, going through entire one hour so we'll talk about the project octail so this is something new what the uh, in the last in the ignite the microsoft health release so what is project octail and how we can use in microsoft team so we'll give the demo about the project octail then we'll talk about the power automate the new desktop rpa solution so that is quite a long time available in the system rpa solutions using the power automate but there's something new new features uh, they have released the desktop version so we'll just showcase the demo on that section and then we have a power virtual agent as well as the bot composer so earlier both were the two different component and quite rich in term of the bot activity so in this ignite they have released uh, something we can use the bot composers visual designs directly into the virtual agent so i will just showcase for those sections so it's just one more uh, process like we uh, not all the things is available in all the talent and release but whatever is not there we'll just show the screenshots and how it's going to release and how we can achieve it after getting release and then uh, the power bi update with the team specifically on the licensing and the power bi has released their own pipeline all those things we'll just showcase for the screenshot and the zip files and then a demo on the azure api management connector so basically what this once if we need to connect with a legacy system so power app has a limited connectors there's a lot of connectors available but there are some legacy system still we need to connect our power platform so we can use the azure api management via the <coughs> if we, we can create our own apis and we can connect via api management to the power platform how we can do the small demo on that and the, if we have a azure sql which we are, we are storing the data and if we need to uh, just connect with the power app so how quickly we can build a ui to do the crud operations on the uh, table state and then last one is a github actions for the power platform update so these are the few updates uh, which has uh, released in the last ignite so let's start so here is the new icon so first of all starting with a new icon so whatever the earlier icons was there respect to the power bi power app uh, power automate and the power virtual agent now it has changed so this is the new icon so once you are using the new presentations or your new work around so please go through the google and take the new icon instead of the old one so that has publicly available in the google so you will get all the new icons okay now start with the project octail okay so the project octail it just like deliver a build in and low code platform for the microsoft teams so this terminology basically looks little different but uh, if you see so what all on the high level it says so all the power platform component they have integrated with their teams and now we can seamlessly within a team itself we can create and launch our applications like the power app ms flow power bi and all those activity so no need to go outside the teams so earlier when we need to do we are going to create a power app applications at the power app dot microsoft dot com once it's ready and we are taking the urls and embedding into the teams so now no need to go as a separate so whatever it was earlier it still exists and hold good but now uh, no need to go into the separate url within a team itself we can create our own power app applications and we can build we can designs we can do everything there so project octal is not only that thing so once we are using uh, creating the power platform applications like the power app so what happen behind the scenes how uh, where the data storage come into picture because in the once we talking about uh, on the separate url power app dot microsoft dot com we have a lot of connectors available which we are going to use to connect the application but here is not that the case here is the tightly coupled with a cds and which uh, give the certain limit of the storage free of cost uh, with respect to the license user which is having teams license user no separate license also required so we'll go through the slides and we'll get more details on the project octail what it is and you will definitely get the more rich insight so it provides a relational data storage so if we talk about relational data storage then only come into the picture are they using the sharepoint no sharepoint doesn't have a relational database exists it's a flat like it's a different different list is there we can't create a relationship so cds is that one which provide which we can declare we can define the relationship and the rich data type enterprise grade governance and one click 
solution deployment definitely no need to navigate and go out of the team context in one uh, teams platform itself we can do everything so that is called the project of tail okay so here are the quite benefits and the features of the project of tail uh, what it support the project of tail support the build the low code and no code apps as well as the flows we can create within the teams itself chatbot using the power virtual agents and it has a storage of the rich data type relational data type uh, capability one click solutions uh, deployment is there within the teams itself no need to navigate multiple place export import and do all these solutions so it's there and if you see the third point right new visual editor so there is a visual editor exist within a teams itself we can go and navigate to the build section there entire visualizations will come how the power apps dot microsoft dot com same data we can perform there and we can get the team context also uh, there out of the box and then the question comes uh, for the couple of people who keep asking like what the license if this project octal as a new thing is came into the market into the team area and how this licensing is very so this licensing as of now this is in public preview not uh, ga so they have uh, given what are the user having a team licensing and same it's a inclusion in the most existing team licensing no separate licensing required so once it's a ga then might be the more details will come out and for the uh, storage point of view if it's not using the sharepoint and cds always come for a post so what's the storage capacity comes for that particular app if i'm going to create so it's not only the ui something you need to store in the back end also for storage purpose right so for the storage purpose they say they are giving the 2 gb uh, per tenant they are giving the storage capacity or 1 million rows uh, we can create if you are creating any of the table structures which is having the rich data like images or other stuff so <clears throat> the size of the particular data storage will be the 2 gb or the 1 million rows maximum as of now it's available which we can use and the last point you know it's not visible here is like support for a 500 teams in a one particular tenant uh, we can create okay, with this project of tail or in a 500 teams uh, we can use the project of tail okay and this is uh, on a high level what's the environment specification so project of tail uh, basically once we start the project of tail or we create any app within a teams it's create their own environment within a teams it didn't use existing environment what my team is having so it's create their own if we go to the power uh, apps admin centers because each power app having their own environments there and if we create using the project octal it's create their own teams based environment with their own storage capacity and it comes like that if you see the comparisons here so the environment life cycles for the project octal and the cds so each environment is going to create as per the team if we are creating uh, one new team and then one environment will also get created for that uh, but if we are having a cds we can create unlimited similarly for the what's the maximum size of data we can store it here 1 million rows or a 2 gb of the data but if you are using the uh, cds which is having the 4 terabytes so that is comes for a cost it's a separate premium one so those pricings will come little later on the more details here and then we have a promote uh, to the common data uh, services so yes so definitely they are saying uh, the common data services more promoting so that is uh, this is because of they are promoting the cds more into this section okay so let's me uh, move it uh, further you will see here and Okay, so let me jump to the demo. And sorry, little bit disturbance will be there in the back end. Uh, some feature has started. So, okay, so we are with you on that for a couple of minutes. So, okay, so for the demo purpose, what's the project of tail? I'll uh, move to the one of the VM. So this I have logged in uh, with one of the users. So let me create a one team, and we'll show how it's work here. So I will just go to the create team, and I will just click, uh, click uh, build. a uh, team from the scratch i will use a public team here i'll just uh, give the name here a recap sessions as we are doing here recap 
uh, recap demo 04 uh, something and I just click on the create. So it will take a couple of uh, seconds that teams will get uh, ready. Yeah, I will not need to add any member as of now here. So our teams is uh, ready here, right? So <clears throat> now till here it's just like a basic features we all know once we are creating a team and all these channels and tabs will start coming up here and what's the new is here now the question is come back again so once we uh, go back here so you can see you can search here so here is coming as a power app as a icon because i have already used this ping so you can guys can go and search it out here you can get the listing of all the power app power bi it was not earlier so it has recently added so i'll select as a power app so once I select the power app, it will open the uh, power app entire studio to me. So here I can go and you can see here the entire the new screens is there. We can create an app. Okay, it will list it down all the apps what I have created. It will show all the template which exist and they have given out of box. We can use those template in our team. And what we are going to create here, so that will be specific to the particular team. Okay. So, for example, if I will go here, click on the new app, and uh, let's see, it will launch, it will ask. So, once uh, this app is going to deploy where? So, I will just select what the new teams I have created. That is a recap demo. I will say create. So, it will take a couple of minutes, and it will uh, create a Power App, and it will give the same interface what we get into the powerapps.microsoft.com. So just uh, wait for a couple of more seconds. Hopefully it should come soon here. Okay. Okay, so in the meantime, I will jump uh, to the admin centers and we'll see there also what is going to come up here. So I will log in with the same users. So let me go back to this uh, section. So here I have logged into the uh, make.powerapps.com. So once I refresh uh, this, one, so the time will just check it out. The sections, yep. So it's going to create its make the ready. So here is the two sections what I was just talking about the home and build. So let it come up. We'll get the more uh, similar features what we are going to create in Power App in the build section itself. And we will find we are not going outside the team context within a team only. We are doing all the operations we are creating our app we are deploying here but one of the things what what we are going to create here we can't access outside the teams that one it's a strictly associated with a particular team if i go to the powerapps.microsoft.com i will not find this particular app which is going to create here okay so let's go uh, in the back end uh, so i'm here we'll go to the admin center so admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. So here it will come back, take some time. Yeah. So let it come. Okay, so in the meantime, we'll jump back uh, to the demo again and we'll see. Yeah. So here it shows uh, the entire uh, designer is there. Okay, so and how we can connect all the data. So we'll just click on the create new table. I'll just uh, create like the event, for example, I give the any of the name events 01. Uh, 01 events. It will create a new table for us. And in that table, we can create all the columns and all the operations, show heights, whatever we need to do. I'll just rename uh, this particular column name. I'll just put it as an event name. Okay. And I will create one more yeah, date, event date. It's just uh, one more column. So here also you will uh, find quite the new enhancements that come, especially in the uh, date control. So once I say the create, so this is like a one table has came up. So I'll say there is a uh, demo for the uh, power platform. This is uh, one of the event. Okay. So once I click to the uh, date control, so you see, so this of the date control was not available in the power platform earlier. So earlier there was a OK button and the cancel buttons. OK button was there. Whenever we are going to select any of the particular day, we need to click on OK. And if you go to the uh, user voice, somebody has raised 
uh, this concerns also why OK button is required. So this new updates also came with the calendar control. So we can select the date, month, and uh, whatever is required. We'll just click it. The date is get selected here. So similarly for the SharePoint, I will say SharePoint updates. So so we have a SharePoint event on this Saturday. I will just select on this one. Yep. So it's just saving the data. So I'll just get it close. So once it get it close, our entity which is going to create into the CDS, it start appearing here and it has mapped as because it was the one default entity we have. If we have a multiple entity, we can change our data source here and it will get connected. So it shows all the records here. We can do all the crude operations. So till here it's fine. If you need to uh, know the team context, okay. So let me go to the plus signs and add one label also here. So I will just take the label and put it here. We'll see what's the news here. I'll just go and just teams dot. So you'll see all the teams related context features will st property start coming here. If you need to talk about the uh, themes, channels, and this theme, I'll select this theme. Or if we need to know about the group ID, ID, or the display name, so all the properties will appear out of the box here itself. So once I run this particular app, so before running, let me rename. So this also the one of the sections. We can rename our app from this section itself. Earlier also that was not there. So I will say the event. This is also one of the new features here. So I clicked on save. Clicked on publish to team. Yep. So it will take a couple of seconds. Yeah, so it will show what are the available channels and to which channels we need to add this power app. We'll just need to click on the plus sign. It means now it's going to add this particular app to this channel. So once I say the save and close, so no need to do anything. If I'll navigate to the team, I will find this particular app will be available associated with the journal channel. Okay, let me go there to the teams. So this is this section. We'll see. We'll find here the 01 event app uh, has appeared here. So let it refresh and see how it's look like. Yep. So this section has appeared. So we can do all the crude operations what we are required here. Yep, we can click on save. We can click uh, the new records uh, need to create. It's just project cortex. We'll say the event date. So that will be 14. I'll say OK. So that data gets saved. So this is not only uh, to this section. We can do more uh, to this one. We can create a relational uh, database here. OK, one more tables and create a lookups and all those things. And we can do the edit the entire screen and get more uh, feature. Now move back to the uh, admin centers. OK, let me refresh and see here how it's admin center having what the new components came to that. So now I'm to the admin centers of the power platform. So you can see the new teams what I have created. It's create a new environment for that. So it's not taking any existing environment what I have. So this is my organizational one. I'm not using this one. So what are the new teams I'm creating? So Project Octail is creating a new environment uh, for me, right? So if I go to the uh, resources, we'll check the capacity. So it's not taking what my existing capacity. So each team is having their own uh, capacity, which we discussed like a 2 GB of the storage or the 1 million records. So let it load here. Oh, it's taking time. Come on. OK, so let it load. We'll just jump to the next section. So I will just demonstrate once we'll come back. My network is a little slow here. 
okay so this was just a highlight uh, with respect to the project of tail so what it is now i'm moving to the next one if you can see here how the power automate section so power automate is going to uh, come uh, later this year it's not uh, fully available here so as you can see on the screen so here also the microsoft team and we can create the actions with respect to the team and all like the template available will be available with respect to the team any actions need to take so in the same context we can create so it will be a basically a new app which will include a robust set of easy to use template for some of the most common automation scenarios within a team all right and another update uh, with respect to the power automate itself so if you see here what it's happening so <clears throat> there is a small extensions icon in the bottom sections this one once this is going to click so this is the approval button it's for the workflow once the users the particular user is talking with this users and they will click it here and they can send the approval request from this form itself instead of creating a workflow and sending separately and attaching the file and asking for the approval so this is one of the how we can do the custom approvals within a team with this uh, <clears throat> with the power automate so this section is also going to launch and it will come later this year not available as of now and another integrations uh, what they have announced like the adopt sign and docu sign so most of the organization who is using the digital sign document so that integrations with respect to power automate that is also going to come soon and yeah this one what we have saw how the power app studio will looks like into the team so that is a new embed power app studio which allow the users to create a custom app with a simple drag and drop app drag and drop approach and to add all the elements whatever available on the power platforms and uh, these apps can be connected to the existing cds project of tail data so like how we are creating here we can create a multiple tables within an app as our storage limit allow and we can connect with those one and start using and this is this app we can use on the desktop mobile device as per our product employees productivity we can use everywhere so the next one so that was a studio point of view if like we need to add any of the particular existing uh, template which exists there are a lot of several uh, app solutions is exist or what we are going to create new one we can add within a teams itself within a team context so power app can also help the professional develop, uh, <clears throat> developers to accelerate their app development process so basically you no need to go outside the team context we are doing everything within a same context where we are okay and the another uh, the biggest advantage as you see in the last points i have mentioned i have a small demo also on that one the professional developers means it means the pro developers so power platform is not only the citizen meant for citizen developers so if you need to connect with a legacy system and like we need a pro developers who can build the connectors and can connect to the power app why the api so that activity is there in system quite long time but they have released the new features to that one how we can manage those api using the azure api management or the azure functions within a power platform now this section is also quite interesting so the rpa so the rpa with respect to the desktop and the web is already exist into the power automate but here they have provide the desktop version so here we can use and do the rpa related operation so i think bharti uh, you can yes, take Manu. it uh, for sure thanks manush so now let's uh, look at power atom with new desktop rpa solution as we already know like we have uh, ui flows to build rpa solutions but now what power atom is does is like it broadens the existing rpa capabilities ui flow capabilities with a brand new flow designer so it gives us a new flow designer which is actually called as power atom with desktop and we of course we still have uh, selenium id win automation which we were using it previously as an extension with ui flow it still exists but apart from these two they also provide us power automate desktop with you know which expands low code automation for both coders and non coders in fact without use writing single line of code even coders and non coders can use this uh, desktop to you know automate it 
and uh, what this desktop actually provides you know a lot of intuitive it gives intuitive drag and drop visual designer with uh, around 370 plus user friendly actions like how we have functions in win automation the same way we have actions to use it here and with these actions we can either uh, use those actions to manipulate our uh, uh, you know automation or we can use the recorder as well to pro pro you know do our manipulations so it uh, and it also allows us to simulate you know multiple scenarios with both uh, web and desktop recorders and uh, it uh, last but not the least it uh, it is easy to troubleshoot and every action in the script if it supports no code error and exception handling using this uh, desktop application so uh, let me quickly jump into the demo for this um manoj i'm taking the screen <laughs> Hope you all can see my screen now. Yes, sir. We can. Uh, I've already installed the Power Automate Desktop uh, in my system, and if you see, if you go to you know web-based uh, flow, I mean this is browser-based um, flow. dot microsoft. dot com, right? Where you will create your UI flows. So when you start creating a UI flow, it actually gives you Power Automate Desktop, Windows Recorder, and Selenium ID. As I was telling you, Windows Recorder and Selenium ID still exist, but I would be covering Power Automate Desktop uh, here on how we can automate using this. So let me close this. I'm not using the browser now. I'm just using the Power Automate Desktop. Let's quickly create a new flow. Say an example. Okay. So let it create. So what I'm going to cover today is like how we will see how we can extract data, you know, from uh, e-books on Google Play. It, it would just take you know few minutes like it will uh, you if you see here you okay, the flow is greater now if you see here in the left hand side you have a lot of actions that is pre-built so you can use either of these actions and you can manipulate your automation or else you can use web recorder let me close this variables so we have web recorder and desktop recorder so you can use this recorder as well to automate our uh, flow so let me quickly go to web recorder and i have my google play store open here Okay. Now, once this web record starts, you'll have to, you know, first select which browser you want to use. Since I have it open in Chrome, I'm using Chrome. Okay. Click on Next. So now it launches your recorder, and if you see, it already have an action opened with, you know, action created for the uh, browser. So now let me start recording. So to start with, let me first go to, you know, uh, see more, which gives me the list of all the e uh, popular free eBooks. So, which will give me the complete data. So now I am going to create four element. One is for the title, and next let let us take the author of the book, and maybe next we can take you know cost or if it is free of the book cost is free or uh, free of cost or if it is cost oriented, and last we'll take the URL of the ebook. So now I am done for one item, but then you should not stop with one item. At least uh, another element has to be uh, created for the next item. This will actually give us the complete record. So I am stopping here. So my recording is done. Let me finish the recording. So now you can see like it creates three actions for us. Let's run and see how it works. Before that, let me close this. So now it launches the browser. Okay, so it's done. Now, if you can see under, I mean, for I've created instance for uh, output data, which is a variable, and you can see 550 rows and four columns has been generated for this. So four columns, which with the elements that we have extracted, and there are 50 eBooks which is actually stored in this variable. So now uh, let me edit and show you how you uh, you can you know this is but currently we are storing it on a variable. Suppose in case if you want to have it in Excel spreadsheet, yeah, as well. So let me store into Excel spreadsheet. Save this. So now an Excel instance has been created. Let's run one more time. Okay, cool. 
So now if you see all our records has been generated into an Excel further to which we can manipulate however we want. So this you can save it or further to wood with this instance uh, with this instance you can you know create your own Excel manipulations and you can use your actions as well to perform. Suppose if you want to extract this data from the Excel and put it into another folder or uh, and files that to be generated. You can further manipulate this based on your need and that can be uh, proceeded for based on your requirement as well. Another option to highlight here is you also have a subflow. So you can create a subflow here say an example subflow one and once you save it, it creates it another tab for you and one you can do your subflow actions here and post which you can add your subflow. You can go and search for the subflow actions here and go to main tab and add this action to the main tab and call your subflow here and save. So this will actually perform your uh, subflows as well. So it's subflows can be created multiple times in your main main workflow and uh, as per your need. So let me quickly show you. I have cre already created a uh, subflow. I mean uh, workflow with subflows. Let me show you. So what I'm actually doing it here is the same actions. I'm extracting the data from the same Google Play book ebooks and uh, in the subflow. If you see I'm creating a folder structure in C drive. Currently if you see in my C drive, I don't have that folder structure with CSV. So it actually creates a CSV folder structure and moves my data into I'm storing it in a variable and from the variable I'm getting the data and putting into a CSV file. So let's run and see. Okay, so now the flow is done. Let's go back to a C drive and I have given my file path. I've created two input variables. If you can see here, it is input file path and folder path. So I'm giving my file path here and folder structure folder name here. So it will create accordingly. So if you see, I have a CSV folder created here in C drive and all the data has been extracted in the format of CSV with semicolon separated. So that's a cool feature here and like you don't need to go into browser and you can use your own uh, power automate desktop to you know automate it. And also if you see one more point to highlight here, if I edit you can see an external name here, which is which the file path on the, the name of the file. I mean the name of the variable that you are providing here. This external name is nothing but suppose if I am not opening my uh, workflow and if I want to run it from here, it actually gives me the input path. So you can provide your input accordingly here and run the flow. So that's all about uh, Power Automate Desktop. Uh, over to you, Manoj. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the, for the cool demo. Let me share the screen with the screen here. Okay. So uh, before that, I will just uh, go back to the admin center as, as I was showing earlier. Admin centers, you see what is our the storage of the particular tenant is have. It just shows all the summary. So here you see this is a new features what they have added. The Microsoft Teams capacity usage. So it's not part of other one which has already exhausted. If I click on the Microsoft Teams, so whatever I have created like the recap demo for. So it's just showing the we have a 22 GB and we have used 512 MB. That is 25 percent has exhausted. So why this 25 percent is came? I just created a one record and one table. So back in it uh, do a lot of things uh, for us. So basically it's take the space for that activity. They are creating the relationship instances and lot of other things. So it's consume the space for that purpose. Once we are going to create one more tables and creating a relationship, it will not increase that fast it's as per the data point of view. Okay. So moving to the another section. So it's the power virtual agent. So if you see the power virtual agent, so that is also part of the team with a team itself. We can create a bot using the power virtual agent. So that is a new feature as per the ability of the for the bot to recognize which users they are chatting and we can provide the personalized user experience. We can make it more rich the section. All right. So this comes uh, with a uh, bot framework composer. So what the screens you are looking through, this is my the power virtual agent and power virtual agents basically once we are going to create a task anything here. So <clears throat> this 
a power virtual agent visible editor not having all the uh, like not having uh, all the features what the bot framework composer is having so we can create our own uh, like all activities triggers all the actions and we can ship that package and we can import it here so that features is there so if you see that actions i import composer topic so we can create here and we can import and it will come back to this section so once we click on the import it will ask for okay share me the zip file so we'll provide the zip file then entire solutions however will zip into this particular package so how you saw in the previous screens the entire section that will not appear because that is part of the entire package it will start appearing here okay so if i will show you let me go back uh, to this section again so here is like how it's look like the power virtual agent and once we'll go back to the topic okay so let it load yeah so those topic for example the site service is uh, one of the topic here uh, divine design the some visualization so all those cards which is coming here when we are asking the questions and defining the conditions and then some messages so so this having their own uh, limits what type of actions we can define what type of triggers if not that rich so we have a bot framework composer section so here we can define as per our requirement it has a more rich capabilities with respect to the actions and the trigger point so for example if we define this one and we complete our package we can export this package as a <coughs> zip file so once it's exported as a zip file we can import this section but that features as of now it's not available it will start appearing here from here we can import that zip file and it will start appearing this section so that is the integration of the bot framework composers with the power virtual agent okay now come back to the uh, power bi so power bi again it's a part of the team now it's an enhanced power bi app for a team uh, which is publicly available later uh, this year and it's easy to discover the data and we can quickly create the visualization from the excel within a team itself no need to go outside the team so that is again this is a rich feature so here you see the power bi premium user license so licensing model has changed so i will instead of going through this section i will go through uh, the one of the uh, url that i have here yep so there they have clearly mentioned so there are some questions like the licensing model has changed so basically the microsoft all licensing keep enhancing every quarter so that quite new updates came with respect to the power bi premium per user license earlier we are having a power bi pro and power bi premium now the per user license also uh, came up so if you just talk about okay what is the premium per user license is a new way of license premium features on a per user basis so earlier premium license come for a bulk and admin need to assign who is having the what type of access into the premium now is a premium per user license also came so it will include all the pro license so earlier the pro, pro license is a separate premium is a separate now they say if we are going in a premium if we are assigning the per user license then all the pro license capability will come along with a per user license then again the questions comes do i need a power bi pro and a power bi per user license no you get all the capabilities of the power bi pro with a power bi premium per user license we don't need power bi pro separate if organizational has a spread for the premium then premium per user license having all the features of the power bi pro so here they have given the brief charts <coughs> what's the difference between the per users and the per capacity one so with respect to the sizing so also it's limited it's a 100 gb it's a 400 up to 400 gb and all those relationships they have defined so this is one of the new features they have or the new <coughs> pricing policies with respect to the power bi now moving to the next one yep. so this is a deployment uh, pipeline so <coughs> now power bi also have their own uh, deployment pipeline so so that like the <clears throat> visualization we can build efficiently and we use those pipeline process by maintaining the development test and production environment okay it will really improve the productivity it will be faster content update uh, delivery reduce the manual work and other error and which feature is like incremental refresh support which was not there 
So until now, the publishing the new versions of the Power BI desktop would result in over uh, overriding all the data and partitions. And now, which require the full refresh of the data to become available again. Now it's the incremental refresh is available. So this issues will go away. And create <coughs> creations of the pipeline from the work page. So here only you will see from the workspace pages only we are creating the pipeline. We are not navigating to any other sections to create our pipeline for deployment of this. Okay, so <clears throat> this one is again a quite cool feature. So how the pro developers can use the power platforms or like if we don't have any connectors available, if my uh, legacy system is access and we need to connect my power app with the legacy system, how we can do. So this is the one small uh, <coughs> demo also I will give. So before that, so how it's work, uh, basically we can create our own API using the Swagger and we can integrate our API using the Azure API uh, management. And once we connect, uh, connected with the Azure API management, as you can see here, the power platforms they have selected and we are exporting our this API. So it will create a connectors within a power app automatically. So no need to worry about for this setting. So we can go to the power <coughs> power app sections and we'll just find all the connections is available and we can easily use those ones. So let me go back and show this section. So for the demo purpose, I have this API is already exists. So let me take it. So I will just run this API. What it is, it will just return the some data into the JSON structure. Yeah, this is where our API is exists. We can create our own API which take the data from any of the other system which doesn't have a direct connector with the power platform. So I log in to the uh, my portal dot I will so from here. Let me go back. We can go and create new resources. And we'll see here integration. Here is the API management. So API management is a quite secured way. People basically use for the security, worsening and monetizing point of view also. So once I create my APIs, it's not like I'm directly using as a HTTP call. So go via the API management service will get lot of features which we can't, uh, which is not available directly on the REST call. So it also exposes a secure REST endpoint on top of our HTTP API, HTTP calls which we are doing the REST call. <clears throat> so here we can provide all the details. It's a quite straightforward here, the API management service name. We can select our uh, subscriptions, organizational name, and just click on the create. So I have done after uh, nothing need to do here. So after that, so I will open what I have created already. Yeah, so it will come up uh, like that. So here we got the sections of the API. So the two important things is there. One is the API where we need to register our API. And once we publish our API, it will goes to the product. So once it goes to the product, will our API get published? And why the API we can export and it will create a connector to the power platform for us. So let it load, taking some time here. Okay. <clears throat> so in the meantime, we'll just uh, go to the power app section. So also I will just uh, refresh it uh, it's already there. We'll go to the data and just click on the connection custom connector. Don't know what quite slow. Yeah, so okay. So as we have an open API is already exists. So I will just take this uh, URL from here. I'll go back. So we can select what type of API uh, we have designed. So it supports the logic app also as your functions also. So as this is an open API, you just we need to select it. Uh, this one open API. We'll select the full section. Just give our API what we have, and it will populate all the details set from the API Swagger subscription. So accordingly, we can provide the sub, uh, suffix. It's like a conference or so something. 
and then we'll select our the product what we have as the conference and click go and create here so once you uh, click on the create so you will get your api will get listed here so once i selected here so what are the apis is having all the uh, <coughs> key functions will start appearing what the get and post methods you have it will all start appearing here so you can test it whether it's working or not so basically i will just select the get topic here so once i select it the http request will go and get your 200 okay the status is coming here so that is fine i'll just go and check the settings if anything is required here yep so it will show all the settings which we have done the same things i have selected we are okay just a test so we can test our apis what data is going to return as all these parameters uh, we are saying the get topic i will just pass any random uh, id of the topic and we'll uh, run it so we'll got the http 200 okay so this is my what the output is coming the topic is a design so we are good to go that API is working into the API management uh, here. So what the important section here is uh, like this key is important. Once uh, we are going to export this API, then we need to provide the key to the Power Platform section. Okay. So for that section, we'll just select to the API and click on the export. Once you click on the export, so here the Power Platform sections come. So once I click OK. Uh, select the power app and power automate section so it shows this organizational uh, environment we are using all those and our api display name i just select okay export okay because i have already done so that's why really but uh, once i say export successfully exports will come so once i will come back to the power <coughs> power app so my custom connectors will start appearing here so no need to do anything it will by default will be available so i can go and click on edit and check it out yep so all the details with respect to journal security definition and we can test here also so it just says what is required uh, for this api so what authentications we are using what the key it comes all out of box no need to do anything here and it shows all the uh, our the get and post calls are available and what the parameters is required and what the output will come basically so basically what when you are using those api we need to provide the payload here payload means what my once the data is coming back what format it is so those response we can define it here so accordingly we can get the those properties in the power uh, into the power app so once i go click so here is like this section, my connections is available once I go and click on the test. So this is again one of the uh, test things is there. It is unknown, get topic. I'll select something different, type 5. Yep, so this API is if I use in uh, with a custom connector that also returning the data which is coming the design. Now, once my connector uh, is available, so we'll go, we'll create a one power app and we'll see how to use it. This one, okay, I'll just go and create a canvas. Okay, I'll go and create a new one. It's a table layout. Yeah. Keep it. Okay. So for the time being, I will just add uh, one leaf. Uh, before that, we just need to add the connection here. So we'll just search what we have created. So this one, I will just add the connection. So now those custom connector, what we have added, it's added as a connection here. So we'll just add the uh, one label and we'll see how we need to call this section. Okay. Demo conference API dot get a topic. 
you will see all those uh, api functions which we are calling it start appearing uh, here so let it run so this is just a status i am just going to print here so when we are just getting that it is what what type of response we are getting the 200 okay or not so those response accordingly we can define our own parameters what we need to show if we'll just define our payload in the apis accordingly all the properties will start appearing and I in that similar fashion we can assign the properties with the to the different controls and our power f controls will be available so this is the way how we can uh, connect with the legacy system via the api management okay so before that now the one more interesting section is there with respect to azure so let me go to the azure again so now i will just uh, go to the azure sql and we'll see how we can uh, connect with the power app from the azure sql environment itself Yeah, so here is my DB. I'll open the Azure SQL database I have created. So if you see in Azure SQL, so the Power Platform also added all are in preview. We can create a Power BI, we can create a Power App, we can create a Power Automate, all operations what need to perform. So let's go back to the table and see what we have. So it's just a, a dummy table with a few columns and a couple of records should be there. So, okay, at least we have a one record uh, for this section. So let me click here the Power App. So here this options will come back, get started. So we need to give our app name. Demo. Uh, something. Yep. So we'll provide the password. You can select the table. This table, uh, we need to create a Power App form. So that's it. If you can see in the uh, URL, let's navigate to the Power App and it will create a new form where I can do the more operations and having a more control instead of creating uh, the connections and getting the data. So that is another way how we can connect uh, the Azure SQL with a Power App form. So let it load. So we can run and we can see the data will start appearing here. Yep. So here also, if you see in the context section in the tree view, the Azure SQL extensions. If I'm creating my any Power App via the Azure API management or from a team, so accordingly that extension and that connection will also come back here. So you see that data will uh, come back. I was having a one record and it's showing what that record. So now we have a full control. We can do the more uh, rich UI. In that section, we can add more control and do the all crude operations that required here. Okay, so moving to the next uh, section, we have, yep, so the last but not least, we have a GitHub Actions for the Power Platform. Uh, if, Harthi, yeah, Bhavish. thanks, Bhavish. So let's quickly wrap up this GitHub Actions for Power Platform. So if you see the another Microsoft's big release is actually the GitHub Actions for Power Platform, and uh, yeah, now it's available in Marketplace as well which actually enables you know for, for professional developers to create their own SDLC workflows using GitHub Actions and they can easily merge and manage the solutions across the environment. It also allows the citizen developers easily create self-serve CI and CD apps and if you see GitHub provides with the connector which enables GitHub integration with the power platform and it also manages various solutions with uh, you know very easily so it is easy to and uh, manage all the solutions within jetab and uh, and if to the complete sdlc is man maintained here and the uh, jetab action it doesn't uh, it's not only works with canvas app and model driven app it also you know gives you with power app which we can use power virtual agents ui flows and traditional flows in fact a builders custom connectors and data 
flow everything with a builder and everything can be you know integrated into one single solution and can be added to the github actions and github actions if you see it is actually available at no cost but then still subscription is required to utilize those actions so that's uh, on a higher level about github actions for power platform so that's it manoj yep thank you man yeah so <clears throat> that's all uh, from our side so if you guys have any questions so we can uh, you can post your question in the chat window or you can unmute and we can talk more on that yeah so hi uh, this is uh, jatin actually i have one question like 